What up guys, it's Jordan here and I'm back with a little CSGO Overwatch here. Um, this is going to be fastest Overwatch in the West part 2 is back. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I've heard there's a lot of cheaters. And as we jump into this right now, I just opened the demo and I got a little sneak peek on accident. Let's look now. We're looking at the floor again, so, um, you know... Happy to be here. <laughs> happy to be back doing some Overwatch. Um, not happy to still be seeing this. You know, uh, since I've been gone playing Valorant, doing other things, I know the anti-cheat in that game just seems a little bit better, but it's more intrusive. So for those of you out there wondering why there's still cheaters, this is kind of a little rant for me. Oh, wait. Can you hear that? Flashbang dance. Guys, by the way, I got a music kit in CSGO. I just heard it in this demo. Don't forget to go check out the music kit. Now it's available when you open the main menu of Steam. Flashman Dance, me and the Verkers. Shout out to the boys there at the Verkers. Um, anyways, all that aside, I know people are still like, how is the anti-cheat so bad? Honestly, if Valve wanted to employ a better anti-cheat, like Face EDSA, Val Valorant, or whatever, they could get more intrusive and they can go and scan deeper into people's computers, but they, I think that would, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that might violate their like, end user agreement. So that's why their anti-cheat um, can only go so far, and that's why there's still stuff like Overwatch. So as we're watching Mr. Suspect here, spin bot name back, we can now bring this to the end. Um, how do I do this? Where do I... And, uh, call that one. So, evidence beyond reasonable doubt. We could say insufficient evidence to that. Other exter external evidence, though, there. Um... Griefing insufficient. You remember, guys, the reason those are insufficient is because we try to, like, help isolate specifically what we're seeing to help them in solving their cheaters' issues. So, yeah. Since it's been a bit since I have got to do Overwatch, they don't serve you so many, so I'm going to sip some coffee and be back in a sec for the next Overwatch. While we wait for the uh, next Overwatch to be available, I figured I'd deathmatch and maybe answer a couple questions in between since I might not have five or six Overwatches to do this time. Hopefully we get at least one good one. I'm going to look at some questions from a thread I did a while ago on my YouTube channel. I meant to ask questions to do a Q&A video, and maybe I'll still do a full video answering more of those questions, but for now, I'll take one. P-Dan uh, asked, Is it true when playing on land, you and others aimed on walls or smokes and listen for the crowd to go crazy to know if you should shoot? Um, stuff like that happened, but not specifically that. I think, you know, a lot of times you would do, like, like, you saw the flash trick I did, if you remember. There's the one on Cash versus Envious, where basically I would flash, and if I could see the other team's faces get white and I would see them in person, I would know if someone was there, right? Um, that works depending on the setup of the LAN, and, like, we kind of made it aware to the LAN tournament organizers because it technically wasn't against any rule, so they had to change the way they would set us up. So stuff like that, like, you're always going to try to abuse. If the other team could take advantage of it, um, and it's not, like, clearly in the rule type thing. Like, obviously, you're not supposed to, like, ghost or whatever. But if, like, like the audience, for instance, I remember getting a kill one time when I was looking at a smoke grenade versus Guardian on Overpass. And I was kind of questioning which side he went. And I, like, looked at the smoke for a second. I heard, oh, and I just went like this, and I got the kill. So it definitely happens, to answer your question. In 2015, someone asked, how is it playing against crazy players like Olaf, JW, etc.? Um, I've always answered this question the same way, like, when you're playing really good players, like, they have different types of feels to them, like, to be honest, like, like, when you play a team like Fnatic back then, it was almost more annoying to play against, like, an, a JW than an Olaf, just because of the offer of playing aggressive and unique like JW did, was very annoying because he never, he's kind of unpredictable, and he was a big X factor for their team. Obviously, Crims and Olaf are, like, the staple riflers in a lot of scenarios, Blusha, but, like, I mean, that whole team was insane at the time, but... Like, for instance, like, Cold Zira on SK. Like, he was really annoying to play against, but he's just playing smart, and he is annoying to play against and wins a lot of clutches. But, like, players like Fallen are probably more scary for someone like me throughout the round because when I'm trying to take risks and find, like, 1v1 rifle fights and an opera is randomly playing really aggressive against me, it's really hard to play against. I think that's the same for every team, you know? Like, there's only one opera that I ever felt like, for some reason, there was, like, an opposite effect when I played against him, and it was Kenny S., and for some reason, like, my teams versus Kenny S had a pretty good time, except maybe, like, one map I think I can remember on, like, Dust2. When we just played aggressive against him, it seemed to, like, 
he seemed to destroy our oppers, but our riflers would always seem to like take ground and like we'd be able to create kills against them and whatnot by, just by applying pressure. So it's a lot of times not what the audience thinks. Like even playing against Simple before he was like opping a lot, like was not always that scary just because like, yeah, he'd hit shots, but like you wouldn't know. Um, complexity, like the last time I could think of like a, a, a rifler player like showing me that insane on like a big match was when I rang for complexity at the major in Katowice. And Nico destroyed us coming out of main on cash. And I remember, like, I wasn't necessarily scared of him, but it was literally just like, it was like one, two, three, like, just insane flick shots. Where I was like, whoa, like this, like if you don't kill this guy instantly, you're dead. And uh, those are always scary players to play against. But you'd be surprised, like, once you get kills and once you get in the server, how um, not you don't do that. You know, you play a lot, and you and you and you build confidence no matter against who you're playing. And we're back, guys. Um, I was just saying before I had to restart that I've been enjoying being back, uh, playing a bit of CS, honestly taking a break and playing Valorant has been fun, but only in the sense that it's just something different as a full-time streamer. A lot of people ask me which game is better, all this stuff all the time. Really, guys, obviously the answer is going to be Counter-Strike is the better game. I think the first time in my career, like I've played Counter-Strike guys for 20 years and it was always a social event, competitive, job, hobby, everything in between. It was the first time I played another game that was so similar. And that I enjoyed and had a similar catharsis from playing. Like PUBG, Warzone, all these other games are fun, but obviously they were never like even close to like replacing CS in my mind. Valorant was the first thing that kind of felt like that because the shooting felt similar and then there was some novelty. And so also like as a streamer, I always wanted to bring variety into my streams, but I just get so bored playing most other games that it was the first time it was fun to play something else. But that being said, playing CS the other day and having some pugs, like actually enjoyed it on stream for the first time in a while where I was like kind of like oh like I want to do well in this pug or whatever for a minute so I'm looking forward to at least sprinkling in some road to global some face it pug some overwatch like this back onto the channel and I know a lot of you guys have moved on maybe don't play CS anymore but still like watching it so I would love for you guys to turn on the notifications make sure you're subscribed and watching the channel just so you give it a chance and see what I'm producing uh, in terms of content all right see you in the next overwatch yeah we're back baby I think he's griefing He's just TKing his team in the garage. They're, they're all griefing each other. Same will be open outside, typing maybe right now. Oh, he said, screw this. Oh, oh did you think you got Yeah, good shot. Nice aim. Could compete with Simple for title of one of the best around here. Anders Semler, what do you guys think about this man? The aim, the chops, the significant and unique movement ability. So we have that, 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 and griefing this time. Boom. Maybe it's going to be someone that's not blatantly cheating. I just want like a semi-blatant cheater. Then at least it's like a murder mystery like on Hallmark or whatever those shows are, those networks are, where like you know who killed the guy, but you're like, let's just see his act at least for a bit. Let's figure, like, let's just watch him pretend for a little bit so we can at least pull out the popcorn. Someone asked me in one of the comments while we're waiting for the next watch. Do you have any solutions to shake the aim? Oh, why is interplay? Is that what's going on? That's so weird. Um, a solution to shake the aim. Honestly, shake the aim is a couple of things. One, you're nervous. Two, your sensitivity is too high. That's my sense right now. Two, two point one. Feels all right. I've been using stretch until now, but using native for streaming purposes. Um, I think shaky aim is definitely like maybe a little bit of too high sensitivity and also realizing how much pressure you want to apply to your mouse. Me, for instance, I would say the most pressure I apply to my mouse is while I'm rifling. I think when I'm pist pistoling, I actually try to really have a lot of the feeling in my arm. And I try to keep my hand from here up, just relax, really light, so that my arm is really guiding everything and I'm more stable with feeling like I'm not too like... Not to like this, like with my rifle, you know, I kind of want to be like, because I'm ready to rec control recoil is really what it is. There's a certain amount of pressure you need to have to have that touch with recoil control. And you all learn recoil control in different ways. Some people it's feeling it in the arm in a big pull down. Some people it's subtle because they have really high sensitivity and it's in the fingertips. For me, it's like in the wrist and hand kind of fingertips and there's a certain amount of pressure, but I use a hard pad. It's a there's no point in me getting into the nitty gritty of that explanation, but the point is I, I, how I feel it with recoil control is a little bit of pressure, right? So with a rifle, naturally, I'm going to have more grip pressure going into a peak when I come around a corner, right? Now, if I have a pistol, 
I'm gonna try to just tone down the feeling in my hand. I'm gonna try to not feel like I'm like applying that same pressure because what I noticed it does is it's better for keeping my pistol or my crosshair on a target. And when two riflers are fighting each other, generally you're not just going like this, right? But when you're fighting someone with a Glock or vice versa, they're moving around a lot. So if I just immediately have that tension in my hand and I come around the corner with a pistol and I fight this guy, it's a little harder for me. Like this movement's easy, but the small movements here up and down are not as efficient as if I'm, if I'm light on my hand. Like all this, I know I'm not aiming at anything as I show you this, but it's actually much easier for me to adjust in smaller form if I'm not applying as much pressure with the pistol. Same goes for the AWP. I don't want to be as big and jolty with the AWP. I try to be lighter on the grip, have smarter positioning, maybe lead the shot a little bit more, and be comfortable with, with being able to toss flicks out there. Hope that helps, guys. All right, I'm back literally the next day because I had things to do last night and... Didn't want to keep waiting for Overwatches to come up just to watch a spin botter. So, now we decided to get a good night's rest before we watch a spin botter. Welcome back. Oh, office. Oh, I already hear sounds. That don't sound right. All right. And you know what? In the end, guys, we're doing God's work. I hope you guys are having a lovely week. I'm going to shoot for one more of these. All right, guys. Uh, you know... Fastest Overwatch in the West. I haven't really had to put my skills to the test, you know? I haven't been able to really utilize my experience here. And yet again, I, I was going to turn off CL Interpolate. Like, but why would I do this? Look at it. I have a much smoother vision of this guy spinbotting at the ground. So I guess spinbotters are running rampant, is the moral of the story, still in CSGO. As I said earlier, I don't know how much more Valve can do in terms of... Do they ever want to get more intrusive? Um, I guess we could end the video here today. Um, I don't know if it's going to change. Um, I'm going to try one more case after this. If, if there's spin body, I'm not even going to include it in this video. Um, I'm going to end this video, though, with a question to you guys. Do you think that Valve should get more intrusive with their anti-cheat? Because their anti-cheat, they've said it before. It could get better, but they would have to scan people's computers. And most people don't want that because they're scared that, you know, they have the government secrets or something on their C drive. I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't mind it. I would trust them. I mean, you know, that's just me, I guess. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.